I've met many people struggling with addiction. Their stories are often heartbreaking. They feel trapped. They feel alone. I once met a young man named David. He was battling a heroin addiction. He felt shame. He felt despair. He thought he was a failure. David's father also struggled with addiction. This is a common pattern. We see it time and time again. Addiction can run in families, but it's not just about genes. It's about environment too. It's about the world we grow up in. David grew up in poverty. He experienced trauma. He lacked support. These factors increased his risk of addiction. But David's story is not just about despair. It's also about hope. He eventually found his way to recovery. He rebuilt his life. David's story taught me something important. Addiction is not a personal failing. It's a complex issue. We need to treat it with compassion. We need to offer support, not judgment. We know that genes play a role in addiction. They also play a role in mental health. This doesn't mean we're destined to repeat our parents' struggles, but it does mean we might face similar challenges. It's like inheriting a predisposition. Think of it like this. Some people inherit a predisposition to heart disease. Does this mean they'll definitely have a heart attack? No, but it means they need to be careful. They need to eat healthy. They need to exercise. The same is true for mental health and addiction. If we have a family history, we need to be aware. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to seek help if we need it. But here's the problem. There's a lot of stigma around mental health and addiction. People are afraid to talk about it. They're afraid to seek help. This silence can be deadly. The stigma is rooted in misunderstanding. People think addiction is a choice. They think mental illness is a weakness. This is simply not true. Addiction and mental illness are health issues. They deserve compassion and care. We need to break the cycle of silence. We need to talk openly about mental health and addiction. We need to educate ourselves and others. We need to challenge stereotypes. When we break the silence, we create space for healing. We empower people to seek help. We foster understanding and empathy. We create a world where recovery is possible. Section four, beyond stigma, a call for understanding. Imagine a world without stigma, a world where people feel safe talking about their struggles, a world where seeking help is seen as a sign of strength, not weakness. This is the world we need to create. It requires a collective effort. We need to challenge discriminatory policies. We need to advocate for better mental health services. We need to create supportive communities. Most importantly, we need to listen to those who have lived experience. They are the experts. They can teach us about resilience. They can guide us towards a more compassionate future. Section five, embracing hope, empowering change. Recovery is possible. I've seen it firsthand. I've met countless people who have overcome addiction and mental health challenges. Their stories are a testament to the human spirit's resilience. These individuals didn't recover alone. They had support from loved ones, therapists, and peers. They found strength in community. They discovered hope in the darkest of times. Their stories remind us that we are not alone. Hope exists. Recovery is possible. Let's create a world where everyone feels empowered to seek help, embrace their stories, and thrive.